Max Verstappen really worked up as F1 steward lifts lid on Fai swearing punishment. F1 steward Johnny Herbert has revealed how Max Verstappen got really worked up in his visit to the steward's room before being punished by the FIA for swearing at the Singapore Grand Prix. Verstappen was sanctioned for swearing in a press conference on the eve of the Singapore GP, with the FIA ordering the reigning three-time world champion to undertake some work of public interest. F1 steward addresses Max Verstappen's rebellious streak after FYA swearing row. The action against Verstappen came just days after Mohammed Ben Sulayem, the president of the FIA, called for a clampdown on drivers using foul language, insisting that we have to differentiate between our sport and rap music. Verstappen went on to stage a form of protest against the FIA, being noticeably unforthcoming in press conferences for the remainder of the weekend, and even holding an impromptu media gathering in the paddock after qualifying once the formal FIA session had ended. The Red Bull driver's stance was applauded by his fellow competitors, including Mercedes driver and seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton, who advised Verstappen to refuse to serve his punishment. Lando Norris, the McLaren driver, added that the decision to penalise Verstappen was pretty unfair and that he didn't agree with any of it. Verstappen's protest even spread across the world of motorsport, with eight-time WRC champion Sebastian Ogier limiting his engagement with the media at last weekend's Rally Chile, having been hit with a suspended €30,000 fine for comments made at the previous round in Greece. Explaining his stance in Chile, Ogier said that drivers have been told by the top of the FIA to shut our mouths, and referenced Verstappen's protest in Singapore, adding, it is not only in rally at the moment. Former F1 driver Herbert was on the panel of stewards who decided Verstappen's punishment and has defended the move to sanction the world champion, insisting a press conference is not the place for foul language, and he has revealed how Verstappen became really worked up during his visit to the stewards' room. The press conferences are beamed around the world, he told... There is more swearing than there ever has been. A press conference is not the place for it. Some journalists have said the sport is trying to make robots out of the drivers. That's not the case. You are just asking them not to swear, which I think is the right thing. Most drivers don't swear. We had a good open chat with Max for about 20 minutes, half an hour, in what was a difficult situation. You could see in his face he was really worked up about it. But when he left, he appeared to be mollified about the process and why it's there. He did not blame us as stewards. As stewards, we have a range of tools to punish drivers. We are there to implement the rules and make a decision together. We could have fined him, but we felt it would be more beneficial to get him to do something socially responsible. It is up to Max and the FIA what that is. It all blew up afterwards because he went to the press conference and gave one-word answers, then held his own impromptu press conference outside in the paddock. That showed Max's rebellious streak. I love that side of him. It is what makes Max Max, his honest and outspoken character, but there is a time and a place. Personally, I think there is too much swearing. I don't want my five-year-old grandchild listening to that sort of language. Herbert hopes a similar situation is avoided when the F1 2024 season resumes at the United States Grand Prix later this month, stressing that the drivers must work together with the FIA to find an even ground. And he revealed that one unnamed F1 star spoke out against drivers using foul language in Singapore. He added, I hope that if Max swears in a press conference at the US Grand Prix, common sense prevails. There has to be an understanding that both sides need to work together. I know the FIA president is unhappy with foul language. There is an understanding among drivers that swearing at a press conference is not right. It is just something that built up from the president's initial rapper's comment, which some found offensive to then Max being dragged before the stewards in Singapore. We had a meeting with the drivers afterwards when at least one, who I won't name, made clear that in his opinion, swearing was not acceptable. There are many youngsters around the world who love the sport and worship the drivers. Drivers have to understand that they are role models. We made the decision that there was a case to answer, if you like. It is between Max and the FIA to agree what the sanction should be and what it would be. That part is out of our control. FIA hit with more departures of senior figures. 
two senior figures of the FIA, its Director of Communications, Luke Skipper and Secretary General of Mobility, Jacob Bangsgaard, have resigned from their positions, while both individuals cited pursuing other interests as the reason for their departures, the timing of their resignations raises questions, particularly given the recent controversies surrounding FIA President Mohammed Ben Sulaim. The Emirati, who has enjoyed a rocky tenure at the helm of motorsport's governing boy since early 2022, found himself once again in the spotlight recently when he announced ahead of the Singapore GP a clampdown on discourse and swearing in Formula One, targeting the sport's drivers in particular. The FIA's fresh restrictive policy was swiftly applied at Marina Bay when officials sanctioned Max Verstappen with a day of community work after the Dutchman used the F-word in Thursday's media conference. Adding to the controversy, Ben Sulayem also criticised the British media, suggesting he had been unfairly convicted by their coverage, though he did not specify the incidents in question. Skipper and Bangsguard's exits are part of a broader wave of departures from the FIA over the past year. Last winter, sporting director Steve Nielsen and single-seater technical director Tim Goss resigned, with Nielsen returning to a role within Formula One management, FOM, and Goss moving to Visa Cash App RB as its new chief technical officer. Deborah Mayer, head of the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission, also left around the same time. February of this year saw the departures of Governance and Regulatory Director Pierre Ketterer and Head of Commercial Legal Affairs Edward Floyd, both key figures in the Concord Agreement negotiations on behalf of the FIA. In May, Natalie Robin, the FIA's first ever CEO who was appointed by Ben Suleim in November 2022, also left her role, further amplifying concerns about the stability of the FIA's senior leadership team. The series of resignations has raised questions about the internal dynamics of the FIA under Ben Suleim's presidency. His push for reforms and attempts to modernise the organisation have been overshadowed by controversies surrounding his public statements and leadership approach. Some critics argue that his blunt style may have contributed to the exodus of key personnel, while others view the departures as part of a widespread restructuring effort. Despite the challenges, Ben Salayam remains focused on his agenda, often reiterating his commitment to improving the FIA's governance and working on behalf of its member clubs. However, with so many senior figures leaving, including Skipper and Bangsguard, the president faces increasing pressure to stabilise the organisation and address the concerns surrounding his leadership style. Ben Sulayim lashes out at British media, they convicted me. FIA President Mohammed Ben Sulayim has teared into the British media, accusing the latter of biased reporting and urging it, stop its nonsense and go back to business. After expressing his frustrations with the lack of recognition awarded by Formula One to the FIA for its contributions to the sport, insisting the governing body only gets rubbish, Ben Sulayem feels that he has himself been unfairly treated by the media since taking the reins of motorsport's venerable institution in December 2021.